11th, it is the third Sunday in the Easter season. And today our text, uh, we get kind of two different examples of how the text is, um, feeds into our own process of how do, we, how do we be in relationship with God in the midst of questions of doubt, in the questions of how do we reconnect with God, how does sin stand in the way. And we hear both from 1 John, which is uh, one of the letters that John has written to the faithful community, and, and then also our text about Thomas, um, sometimes called doubting, but always Thomas is inquisitive. So as we begin this day, we begin with our welcome statement. We believe God loves everyone. As disciples of Jesus, we actively seek to live life in fellowship with the beautiful spectrum of diversity made manifest in the body of Christ. As Lutheran Christians, we respond in faith to the grace God first extends to us. This grace extends to all of God's creation. We recognize that many have not experienced God's all-encompassing welcome from the established church. We specifically welcome all people, including those of all races, ethnicities, gender, and sexual orientations, ages, economic levels, and abilities. We invite you to join us as together we seek to respond in faith to God as God's hands and feet in the world. This is our welcoming statement. We sing. Thanksgiving. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Breathe your peace into your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us compassions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. 
we pray the prayer of the day. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. Our first lesson this day is in Acts chapter 4, beginning with the 32nd verse. And it is written, Now the company of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made to each as any had need. Word of God, Word of Life.
Our lesson is from 1 John, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. And it is written, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we saw it, and testified to it, and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have heard and seen, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing this, that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and the expiation for our sins, and not for ours, but for also the sins of the whole world. Word of life, word of God. where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your hand here, see and see my hands, 
Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to them, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's just take a moment to be present to our scripture, but also to open our hearts to hear God's promise and hear God's word. Mercy, grace, and peace from the one who creates, redeems, and sustains. Amen. There is something that I've discovered in my own life, but also in the life out of, from Scripture, but also the life of the Church. That there is a certain pattern to how one lives out and engages their faith. Um, not just in terms of finding it in scripture, but also just in the practical experience of living. That being, that being believers in the story is the first step of that pattern that we see. Because the second, second part of that is doubting the story. The third part is reconnecting to the person about whom the story is. And then the final phase is trusting the person who has told that story. And we get that in our gospel today in a very, very intentional kind of way. Thomas is often judged as being doubting, but that's not where his relationship with Jesus starts. He's been a follower of Jesus. And in St. John's writings, Thomas is lifted up as the disciple who asked the hard questions of Jesus. Not doubting, but believing that what Jesus says and does matters. He wants to understand who Jesus is and what is his mission. He gets it wrong many different times, but Thomas is engaged and he is listening deeply to what Jesus says. And we have to realize that Thomas is the one who's absent from the room. Is he just playing hooky? No, my guess would be he's probably, um, he's probably helping take care of the other believers at that time. Maybe he's out getting groceries for the other people that are too afraid to leave the room. So why should Thomas be surprised? Why should we be surprised that when the disciples proclaim that Jesus is alive and that he's risen, he, that he's given us peace and he's breathed on the Holy Spirit, they have done nothing but stay in the upper room. That's it. Why should Thomas believe anything has changed, that any of this is true, if the people are not changed in the process. Now, I'm sure you all remember that I have preached on this exact theme previously. Just go back a year or two. If Jesus is truly resurrected, why are the disciples not changed in this event? They have, as I said before, they've received the, the, the peace of Christ. They, he has breathed on them the Holy Spirit. And their first command is that they are to forgive. This is important because with Thomas, when he does see the Lord, he does something that none of the other disciples have done yet. He falls down before Jesus and he proclaims, My Lord, and my God. He has worshipped Jesus as God. Now Thomas knew Jesus and his mission. In that event 
of falling on his knees. He now knows truly who Jesus is. And he knows what Jesus' mission is. That it is about worship and it is about forgiving. Thomas has gone from experienced Jesus to doubting Jesus' risenness to reconnecting to Jesus in that moment and then finally truly trusting the person Jesus as his Lord and his God. We also hear the same pattern of believing, doubting, reconnecting and trusting in the first letter of John, which is our, our other reading for today. And it shares that the word of life, Jesus, has been revealed, seen, heard, touched, declared, that the fellowship with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, has already happened. So we then have to look and, and think about what does that mean? That it's been seen and heard and touched and declared. What does that mean for us? I mean, Jesus has proclaimed God is, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And now Jesus Christ is that very light of God. It is the very life of the Father. Yet the pattern continues. We have fellowship with God, which is about believing, yet we still sin. That's what 1 John tells us. And we still sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And in that sin, we are also doubting. We doubt that God can love someone who is still a sinner. That God can love someone who is still in the darkness. But our text reminds us, but God who is faithful and just forgives our sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we have believing. We have the doubt that is surfaced in the midst of sin. And then there is that reconnecting, reconnecting to God because God's love and God's cleansing is, is also part of our life. Yet even in the midst of sin and doubt through Jesus, our advocate, that sin is taken away. And in the midst of that, we enter into a deeper place of trusting God's word about forgiveness. Trusting God's word that what God and Jesus truly want to accomplish can be accomplished in me. This is why I think this is so important. We're all Thomas. We're all Peter. We're all, we're all those who, who believe and doubt, reconnect and trust. When, I, when people have come to me in the past and asked me, uh, well, I really want to start reading scripture again, where should I start? I always tell them, start with this first letter of John in scripture. Don't try to start at the beginning, don't jump right into a gospel. Start with one John. And here's the reason for that. 1 John explains this pattern that I've been talking about. And it explains it in such a way that it engages us that we recognize not only that we have sinned and that we have believed and we'll sin again. It tells us that cuts the power of God is not, doesn't, it's not one and done. It's not one time we believe and then we're always, we will always believe, we'll never doubt. That's not the Christian life. Christian life is about the cycle of God's constant forgiveness, the constant forgiveness that we are reminded of in baptism, the constant forgiveness that we're reminded of 
as we share communion. And so what I think we have to come to realize is that we have that Christian life, that pattern, that we will constantly be living through. Because living in relationships, relationships demand not one thing, I, I love my spouse one time, and that's enough, but it's a constant journey for us to be engaged in what God calls forth from us. That is what Christian living is all about. That's what it means to be resurrection, resurrection people today. It means that we're on the journey, that we're in that constant cycle. And in every step, God is there in love, in forgiveness, with life eternal. That's the promise. And in Jesus Christ, that promise is fulfilled. Amen. So let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, with power and love, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide the vital vitalization, necessary mo moisture to our par parched lands. Give your whole creation the promise of no life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O God, 
Guide all in authority that they shepherd their people in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of generous of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others, whatever those needs are, and especially these, this month, we pray with Shepherd's Door and the clients and the staff there who are our partners in ministry. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You give us a fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and the joy is complete. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And let us remember during this time our call committee and the work that they continue to do, but also the, the work of our council and our committees as we are preparing for our transition to uh, be back together on a more regular basis. We pray for our new pastor, whoever they may be, that they also will be filled with the Holy Spirit and know the love of Christ and proclaim that to us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Share that peace with those who around you. Pray for peace for those who are connected to you. Share that peace. Also on this Sunday, I just want you, um, I want you to be thankful. You have an extraordinary church staff who has for over a year has been faithfully uh, providing worship and information and communication and outreach. We have an extraordinary group of volunteers who make up this church who've all through the pandemic have stayed safe, but have been involved and committed to what we are about. I just hope you know how much I as pastor appreciate our staff and our volunteers and you who continue to support our ministries. You make this possible. Thank you.
God of love, you call us beloved children and you welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we break bread and share cup, we are also reminded of that pattern that I spoke of in the sermon. For we will be people at times in our lives where we believe very intentionally. There will be times in our life where we will doubt. There will be times when we reconnect with our God. And there are times when we will be called to trust deeply. This is an event of trusting deeply. Because we already believe. We may have questions. We reconnect. But this is the moment when God connects to us in a very intentional way. And so we share the words of institution. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So come, Holy Spirit, upon these gifts of the church, bread and cup, body and blood, the body of Christ. And let them be a sign unto us of your presence and reconnection with us as we live our life in you. And we pray in the words that our Savior has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. And for those not receiving communion today, know that God's blessing of his life, of his promise, fulfilled today for you. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. My song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect Great
submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Several announcements for the coming week. Um, some of the upcoming meetings this week um, on Tuesday the 13th, personnel is meeting and the Living Memorial Endowment Committee is also meeting. Wednesday the 14th, uh, we have Bible study. We are in the midst of the book of Revelation. You can join us at any time, but we will be doing chapters 16, 17, and 18. That is on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Uh, Thursday the 15th, high tea and happy hour at 4 p.m. And our topic for, for that week will be, where do we see resurrected life today? Sundays, uh, both today on the 13th and next week as well, we continue our 11 a.m. Uh, Zoom conversation about the scriptures of the day, but also the sermon, if you've had a chance to view that. Um, birthdays coming up this week. Today, Kim Doherty. Uh, the 13th is Annetta Anderson. Uh, the 15th is uh, Deirdre Chapel. Uh, Richard Johnson and uh, Melina Nichols. 16th is Martha Ralph. 17th is Brendan McNasser. We celebrate their life and their, their life celebrations this week. There are no anniversaries this week. I believe those are all of our announcements at this time. Receive God's blessing. May the glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Have a blessed week and know that the risen Christ is with you. Yes.
It's time.